Thank you for coming. Want to make a quick statement, and then we'll get uh, to your questions. Um, obviously, we're on a tough part of schedule, um, and uh, we're heading to Memphis. It was 16 and four over the last two seasons. Eight and two at home. Really good football team, uh, centered around their quarterback, Seth Hennigan, who is a a guy that a lot of people thought last year would go in the draft, but he opted to stay, which is. You know, good for him and great for Memphis. Um, <clears throat> uh, Ryan Silverfield's in his fifth full season as a coach. He's a good guy, uh, and he does an excellent job. Um, this is the third team uh, that we face so far this season that's either ranked or receiving votes. And um, so back-to-back uh, -back travel weeks, uh, but we're both 2-1 and one in the league. So, uh, and it's all about the league, um, important game. Uh, <clears throat> we, we played them well last year. We lost in overtime, although we have a, you know, a, a different team and so do they. Um, they've added new coordinators on defense <clears throat> and um, same on offense uh, and uh, change their kicking game around. They have a very good kicking game. I don't expect that we'll get many opportunities to return any balls. Uh, uh, because the kid kicks it out of the end zone. They have a very good punter, um, and their defense is much improved. Uh, they have some really, their linebacking crew, I would say, is their strength, but their defensive line is very good also, and they're uh, long and, and athletic in the back. They are, they're, you know, they're, they're six and one be, for a reason. And, uh, you know, their victory over Florida State, who I know is a little bit down, but when you watch that film, that, that really, they really kind of had their way with that. Um, we are uh, healthy, um, <clears throat> well, you know, banged up in the normal football, you know, way of being banged up, but nobody that will not play. And um, <clears throat> so now I'll take questions. Coach, just over halfway through the season, what do you feel like are maybe still the biggest things that you guys are working to improve right now? What are some of those areas that you've targeted? Is areas Starting fast. Okay. Starting fast. It needs to be done to help you guys start faster. Um, I turn the ball over. Uh, first series, get three and out on defense. Tackle people, do your job, those things. Very basic football stuff. Saturday, you said that um, you guys did a lot of beating yourselves against Navy as opposed to applying you know, and trying to beat Navy. And the chip on the shoulder of the team was in that room and obviously coming back here from, from Annapolis. Has that chip grown? How has he seen the focus since you guys have returned to practice? <clears throat> well, we didn't talk about it at all except after the game in the locker room. Um, we, we have put that game to bed really early. It's an anomaly game in that it's just a, such a <clears> – <throat> the academies are just different than everybody you're going to play as far as scheme. But our turnovers, which were – and there were a lot of them, led directly to 31 points. And most of it was early, early, early in the football game. Um, I think a lesser group of men would have gotten 80 hung on them. Um, but, you know, talk about a chip. Yeah, they, they, and, and, and I'll say this, you know. We put them through a big work day today, um, and it was okay. It wasn't great, and I got on them today after practice because I didn't uh, love how uh, it went. Um, I got on the coaches too because practice just dragged too, too much, too much talking and not enough doing. So we'll fix that today and get get to tomorrow and get a couple good days on our belt. Vocal in your support of the effort your guys are, are putting out there week in and week out. Translating the execution into the effort, it, it seems like getting the execution into that effort, it, it seems like that. Is, is that the great coaching quandary that every coach faces? Yeah, you know, we're three and four and we're two and one in the league and we've played a hell of a tough schedule. Okay? This has been, we, we have the second toughest schedule in the league. Uh, we have the 38th tough schedule in the country. Um, and if you look at the, the strength of schedule and the other people in the league, you know, they schedule to go to bowl games. 
and um, you know, 118, 119, maybe 130 something. Um, our kids are playing their asses off. They're playing really hard, <clears throat> and they're fighting. And um, you know, that's 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 what I think about that. The biggest benefit is that comes from playing that tougher schedule, especially when you're in a stretch like this, three-game stretch against three of the league's best teams. There's only a benefit of doing that if you get to a bowl game. Okay, if that kind of schedule keeps you away from a bowl game, then the schedule hurts you because when you're out recruiting and when you're out hiring coaches, they want to know one thing. Can your team go to a bowl game? Because if you go to a bowl game, there's longevity. If you don't go to the bowl game, you're not going to get great coaches to stay because or to come or to stay. And no player I've ever recruited has said, hey, who, who do you play? I always want to know, are you any good? Do you, do you play in the postseason? So that's kind of, um, you know, we're, we're, and we're in, a tough, we're in a tough run. These next three games are really tough. But you know what? So what? It's football. We're in a tough league. You know, we can't just raise our hand and say, geez, we're not going to play these guys and those guys. We're going to play those guys and these guys. And everybody in our league has a, you know, has to, obviously has to play the league schedule. And, and, and so we just got to, you know, we, we just got to suck it up and, and play good, hard football, which we've played all year. But we got to start fast. You know, we just have to start fast. The one game we start, f and we put it on tape. We've put it on tape. So it's not some figment of my imagination. I told the kids this uh, Sunday. Um, we, we put East Carolina on tape. That's who we are and who we can be. But the key to that game was we started the game fast um, in all phases of the game, starting with the opening kickoff. And when we do that, we are really tough. We're going to be really tough to beat when we do that. Um, and believe me, we are working on all kinds of ways of doing that, from the way we do warm-ups to the, the competition periods in practice, <clears throat> starting practices fast. It, it's just a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's like being in a laboratory. You know, you have to add the things and see what comes out of the test tube, and then you add something else, and you, you keep going. But one thing, they've never given up, ever. And that is, uh, that is really, I think, the a very important thing. You know, he broke his non-thumb, non-throwing hand thumb, <clears throat> had it surgically repaired right after uh, East Carolina. Um, the question about really with him is he's wearing a brace. Can he take a snap, which he looked like he could today? But then there's all kinds of handoffs that he's got to be able to take. You just can't hand the ball off with your right hand. You know, when the ball's going in the other direction, you got to be able to, you know, you got to be able to have your left hand there, and his hand can't. Okay, so it, it can't do this. So if you try to catch a ball like that, it's very difficult. I thought he looked good throwing the ball today, but Max will be the starter against Memphis. Announced before the game that Jaquarius Connolly is now eligible. He played a little bit. Uh, just what's the, I mean, what's the feeling around the locker room now that he's back and able to play? Thrilled. So there's some people to thank. Um, Reagan Hill did a yeoman's work here. I mean, she, she actually drove the kid to Chapel Hill one day. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> Katie Renault, our head of compliance, and Mike Hill got involved too, you know, athletic director to athletic director. But, but I do think we should also thank Bubba Cunningham. Um, uh, we ought to thank Mac Brown. And uh, we, we ought to thank um, uh, Rick Steinbacher, who uh, um, helped us with all this because uh, – uh, after that last press conference, they, they, they got involved and I think expedited the thing. And it's great for the kid, right? It, he did, we didn't know until um, Friday night at uh, Ray, Reagan called me and I, during dinner, team dinner. So it was sometime 6.30 or 6.45. And then she came back, uh, Hoovered back from her event to uh, announce it to the team, which I thought was appropriate. The team was very happy about it. Um, we have a lot of respect for Memphis. I have a lot of respect for their head coach. They're a really good team, but 
and, and they are a really good team. Um, but we have a good team too. And, and I think everybody that plays us it knows we have a good football team. And the ones that beat us are relieved at the end because they know it could very easily have gone the other way. Um, we're going to play really hard against Memphis, that I can assure you. John Wilson had a career day last year in that game against Memphis. And then look at the running back, Catavius Norton, just keeps having big performances as well alongside Wilson this year. How key is the run game going to be, especially against Memphis, and just trying to, trying to keep it, like in the first half, especially against Indiana, it was just keeping that game close early? Well, <clears throat> you have to be able to run the ball or you can't win. And uh, Hassan did have a great game, but he also fumbled the ball last week against Navy at a critical time. And I told him on the sideline, you're a good back, but you can't be a running back if you have a fumbling issue. And, um, and he is probably our big threat guy. He's the guy that can really go the distance. Uh, he and the freshman, Rod Ganey. Um, but we're working on ball security with him. And, and you know, I, I can just tell you, you know, you got to hold the ball. Starting fast, uh, obviously between the lines, it's about execution. <clears throat> Before you get out there, is it is it a state of mind? Is it mental? Is it? Is yeah, we have a whole pregame routine we put in the week before East Carolina, um, which really served us well, and it's very elaborate and complicated from when we start, when we get to the what we do in the hotel before we leave to when we went, we change the whole thing to when the buses roll in, to what we do once we get there, and how that all rolls. And they responded very well against East Carolina. Um, you know, the issue with, uh, with Navy was, I mean, you know, I mean, good Lord, you know. They go down and score a touchdown, okay, but then we come back and we throw interception after interception, drop, fumble, next, next series of fumble. You know, you take those out, and, and it's a – it, it, I think that game would have been a battle, but you, you cannot turn the football over. I don't care who you are. We turned it over five times, and you can't beat anybody doing that. So that, 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 that masked any start we could have had. Um, but I don't think we started well on special teams either. So, <clears throat> um, but we'll get it fixed. Following up on that, though, is – not necessarily the physical, what you guys do to prepare for a fast start. Is it something that the players just kind of have to believe? Yeah, just philosophically. Um, well, if you can't get yourself ready to play a college football game when you're 20 years old on a beautiful day against the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, then you need a, an attitude transplant. And I don't think that they were not, I don't think it was that they were not ready to play. I think that when you practice for a team like Navy, and we had a really good week of practice, believe it or not, the difference between what you can show with your scout team and what they do with their team is just, you cannot duplicate it, which is why these teams are, you know, uh, undefeated in the conference. You, know, you just can't duplicate it. And, and so, um, and I think when they went right down and scored, I think that, that, that uh, you know, that um, it was like, holy crap. You know, we had a good week of practice, but what are they doing? You know, they're, do they're doing it so fast. <clears throat> and then I think the quarterback was really rusty. Uh, you know, he hadn't played in four, four, basically four and three quarters games, and it looked like it. And I thought that his confidence – was shot after the first. That's why I sat him down. You know, just go sit and get your head together, put Trex in, and, and then give him a couple series, and then we'll, we'll get you back in. And I just think that he was so afraid of making a mistake that you know, he made a number of them. And so, um, you know, and, and the way we're going to handle the quarterback situation, I know you're all wanting to know that, so I, I believe in transparency. The guy who has the best week practicing is going to start. I do not believe in this thing where, like, if you don't have – if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Who had, that was some old coach that said that, and all of a sudden it became, you know, kind of gospel and the lure of football. That, that's, that is absurd. I mean, um, 
that's just ridiculous. There's plenty of instances of two quarterbacks, and and I was part of one in 2001 with J.J. McCarthy and um, Cade McNamara, and the best guy that practiced that week started, and we went to the college football playoff, and we were 13-1. and one. What we're going to do is the guy who we're going to treat that position like you'd treat offensive tackle. If you practice well, you're going to start. If you go in and give up three sacks in the first two series, you're not going to be playing anymore. And the other guy's going to go in, and whoever is moving the football team is going to play. One week it may be one guy, the next week it may be the next guy. But there are no crowned or coronated uh, guys that are going to be uh, the court. It's whoever's doing best in moving the football team. Well, because the offense, you know, coach came in here and said, we want fast starts. We want everything to start fast. What do you think maybe went really well in the East Carolina game versus maybe what happened in the Navy game offensively? Um, I think, you know, there's a few things to be said. Everyone has their own opinions, but from an kind of inside-out point of view, um, East Carolina, you know, we had a new routine. Um, it was great for us, you know, got the juice going, came off, made some great plays. Um, and the most important thing to remember in that game was the fact that even though we were up, we kept going. You know, we're a team that goes all the way to the end of the fourth quarter. And I think that's evident in the Navy game too, you know. Yeah, we, okay, we came out, might have had a bit of a slower start than we wanted. But, um, you know, you watch the tape, you talk to the guys. We're, we're in it offensively and defensively to the fourth quarter, really trying to get, trying to get up because we're a team that doesn't quit. And we've been in situations where, you know, we've been down, but we came back as a team and we never let up. So. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a few things to be said. Um, maybe there's a few adjustments to be made, however the coaches want to handle it, but the team's always on go from the start to the end. New pregame routine. Did you find it difficult at all as a team to bring it on the road, or was it pretty seamless to take that on the road after kind of starting it at home? I think it was pretty seamless, honestly. Um, once we kind of got a taste of what it's like to you know, come out the gates firing and be ready to play, um, you know, we loved it. It became, that, became our favorite food, you know what I'm saying? So keep doing the same thing consistently, and we'll be, uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah, on the defense, it's it's what a coach had brought up was when you see a team like Navy, when you try to scout them, when you try to do all these things to get ready for them, the second you first see them, it can be a little bit of a shell-shocking thing because they run their system so well, so quickly. What was it like kind of early on in that game for the defense to really see the way they ran that offense? Uh, um, as far as in like communication-wise, communication has to be there uh, in order to be, be the team like that. I feel like as the game went on, our communication has gotten better. But um, I feel like as long as we communicating, we always on the same page and we pretty much able to put stop to them. So it's, it's about that because that was pretty much the thing for us play a team that plays obviously very different than Navy. It's, you know, just had a very good offensive game this last week. What is maybe your guys' biggest focus on defense against Memphis? Um, they, well, they obviously got a great quarterback over there, great receivers. They got uh, they got a good core over there. Uh, just stopping the pass, they, a lot of deep rows. So, you know, like I said, communication with the corners and the safeties being all, just being all on the same page. Uh, our preparation, keep our preparation the same. Uh, believe in one, or, one another, and uh, 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 just just start fast and do the same thing that we always do. Practice today, you know, the coach said just wanted to have a loose run. Um, did you notice anything like that or attempt to explain what could be changed in practice maybe that would allow you guys to have a start today? Um, twenty five. Uh, I say probably just our preparation coming out, being ready to practice, just being ready to practice. I say. Sir, how easy is it to flush a game like Navy and move on to the next one? Because, I mean, obviously it's complimentary when the offense struggles. You guys get put sometimes in tough spots. But how, how easy is it to flush one of those and move on to the next when you, you, know, when you guys are trying to you know, be in sync with it all around? Uh, just going week to week, you got to be ready. you got to be ready for the next opponent. So yeah, it was it was a tough game for us, but you know we had to flush it, and it was kind of hard to flush it. But you know, next week, next game, 
you got to get ready for Olympics. So, I mean, it was, it was some slight adjustments of, like, as far as, like, blushing after blushing the loss like that because we all seen, we all, we all seen the game. That's like, that was kind of tough, but, I don't know, just next, next game mentality. Um, honestly, I think it's it's probably similar to a lot of offensive linesmen and the culture of being an offensive linesman. You know, our duty is to protect and also to create pathways. Um, so we take it as a big role as our O-line to you know, lift them up. Um, when we're in those huddles, we look at them, tell them we're ready to go. Um, we also do it in practice a lot. In practice, you know, we're always going to bring the juice. We're always going to bring everything we can. Even though we might not feel like it, we know as our role as offensive linesmen, we have to bring it every time. And we're going to show up for our quarterback no matter what, no matter which quarterback, no matter which running back. Because at the end of the day, we're showing up for the emblem that's on our chest, you know, 49ers. So obviously there's challenges sometimes, but we try to keep it the same and, you know, making sure that everyone knows that we're here to play for them. So of injuries you guys have had three different quarterbacks this year each of them operate a little differently as an offensive line how long does it maybe take you guys to adjust to how each guy plays or is it pretty smooth to transition each guy i would say it's pretty similar um we get great looks across practice where we work with a lot of the quarterbacks you know like you said they've been a few of them have been injured so we've been moving them in and out making sure you know we gel and i would say you know they're not all that that different really as an O-lineman, the objective stays the same. Protect the quarterback, protect the money back, and, you know, do your job, man. So that's kind of our approach to that. Same question I asked him. How easy is it, how hard or easy is it to flush a game when offensively it didn't go the way you guys wanted to? And maybe you don't feel like you even really got a chance to show all that you could be because of turnovers and, and that sort of thing. Is it easy to flush one of those? I mean, it's definitely not easy, you know. Um, anybody that plays any type of competitive sports that suffers a big loss, it's something that's hard. But, you know, me personally, and I think a lot of guys on our team take it as something to work towards for it to never happen again. Um, we also, it took a, it takes a lot of maturity for, you know, a new group of guys to be able to step back um, as an offensive group and say, hey, we didn't do well. Um, that's the bottom line. However, we did have more rushing yards, more passing yards, you know, a lot of great possessions. When we had the ball, we did good things. And so it's definitely not easy to flush it, but it's easy to work towards the next thing. And it's easy to take the positives and try to create some new ones in um, the next games ahead. So, yeah. Memphis defensively as you prepare for them this week? Um, I'd say, you know, Memphis is, uh, you know, tough defense, definitely. Um, I feel like they're kind of like our defense. Um, they've also brought in a lot of guys, um, you know, a lot of guys that want to play football just like us, um, just like me, a transfer myself. And, you know, I think they're hungry to get after it, and so are we. So it's going to be it's going to be a great game, man. I can't wait to watch it. I mean, be a part of it, sorry. <laughs> For both of you. <laughs> Biff had brought up, you know, this hard schedule is as valuable as you let it be, right? If you're learning from it, if you're moving on from it and growing from it, it can obviously be a very powerful thing. What have you guys really learned when facing some of these really hard teams like in Indiana, like in Navy? I mean, what have you guys learned from those games? Stay together. Stay together through the tough times. Yeah, definitely. I would say, like um, Trey Brown said, you know, sticking together and also just believing, man. Like, a lot of people view this place as, you know, it was a tough year last year. And a lot of people would think going to those games are, like, I would hate to be Charlotte, this, that. Nah, man, like, we rise into the challenge. We love the challenge. Um, and it's something, you know, coming from a bigger conference and stuff, a lot of us guys, it's like, that's our standard. And we want to make that Charlotte football standard that we can go into here and compete against these higher teams because we have the coaches to do it. We have the right people around the facility. And we're building a great culture. So 